Kicking off tomorrow, the annual New York International Auto Show. And according to our next guest, the mood this year is shaping up to be a little more subdued than usual. It's just one of the effects of higher fuel costs. Scott Painter joins us now with a preview of the show for our series, Autos at a Crossroad. He's the founder and CEO of TrueCar.com. There's nothing I like talking about more, really, <laughs> so at least true. on TV, <laughs> than cars. Um, you say it's going to be more subdued. It's kind of, it's not this sort of hot luxury. We're not going to see a ton of Lamborghinis and, and Ferraris here. Well, you're certainly going to see those cars, and I'm a car guy too, so I love going to car shows. New York has always been sort of the luxury car show. It's where you debut the really hot cars, but just as a signal of where the industry's at, Cadillac isn't even debuting a new car this year. They're really holding back and waiting till they have something very cool to, to roll out. And so I think what you're going to see this year at the New York Auto Show is really sort of a back to basics approach at the manufacturer level. They're really focused on cars that are going to be great cars for the masses. So you've got the Beetle, you've got the Chevy Malibu, you've got the, the Honda Civic. I mean, just some great, great cars. We've got the Beetle up. I mean, Matt checked it out too uh, and did an interview with one of the guys over at VW. I mean, what do you the make CEO of the CEO? Of VWS. One of the no guys. Deal. He's a guy. No um, what do you make of what's going on at Volkswagen? Well, I I'm personally a fan of cars that are really sort of true to what they're supposed to be. So I love the Mini because it's a Mini. I think that, you know, VW's sort of approach to try to more uh, masculinize or, or make the, the Beetle more popular with men really isn't That's necessary. Girly, huh? Yeah, I, th I think the Beetle is a girl's car and it should stay a girl's car. <laughs> I, I have to agree, but it is kind of lower, flatter, wider. It's kind of like a modern 356, if you will, and uh, they come from a similar, the same designer. Well, so BMW, I'm sorry, so Volkswagen actually has a great heritage and they've got great designers, as you say, they've got great engineering. So really the modern day Beetle benefits from all of that. Mm. It's still a Beetle though. It's really hard to take something that's got such a brand connection, such a identity all the way back to that original Beetle and make it something different. Hang on, so the Beetle's a girl's car. You're not that impressed by it, but you love the Chevy Malibu. I do love the Chevy Malibu. I think it's, it's really our first world car that can take on the Accord and the Camry. Yeah, the Chevy Malibu is going to be a very high volume seller. I think that General Motors has really said, you know what, we're going to pay attention to what consumers want. They're going after high mile per gallon family vehicles, and the Chevy Malibu is a, is a it really look sharp too bad looking car. It's not bad inside either, does it? No, it's, I mean, it's got everything that, that GM has got in, in their latest vehicles. Brilliant car, great world car. It's going to do very well. GM kind of getting its act together, in your view, in terms of what you're seeing in product. We keep saying, you know, through the bankruptcy and coming out of the bankruptcy, they've got to get good product to the market. Well, I think the American auto industry in general was really caught with very low mile per gallon vehicles in general. And so there was a real product revolution. I think Ford led it. I think GM is sort of catching up. Uh, there's no question that even though you're starting to see a lot of SUV and, and sort of pickup sales, it's because the overall car market's very high. We're going to see another 13 million car month mm. in terms of the sort of seasonally adjusted number. So the demand is still high. The numbers are high. But as a rateable number, we're very reactive to high gasoline prices. There's almost been a 30 percent drop in demand over the last 30 days in low mile per gallon SUVs and pickups. We see it directly. We see it directly. It's a very, very immediate reaction. Anytime gasoline goes over 350. And what, a, you know, that makes me think about trucks. Seeing uh, GM and Ford makes me think about trucks. Everything pretty much makes me think about trucks. Are there going to be a lot of them at the auto show? It doesn't seem like you're getting that much. You don't get a great new expedition. You're not getting a lot of uh, new facelift on the Yukon. I mean, wh why not? It, you're looking more at crossovers. It, it really is coming down to miles per gallon. So even the traditional, you know, General Motors and Ford, you know, sort of focus on SUVs and pickups is moving now to the Edge and the Acadia and some of these other vehicles that are more of a crossover because of the miles per gallon. Ten, ten seconds. What about the hybrids? What's happening with that? So hybrid is still very, very hot, right? You, you had Toyota, a little over 10,000 units on the Prius in January, moved all the way up to 18,000 units in March. We've had a lot of production hits, so you're going to have a lot of pent-up demand mm -hmm. coming back into the market. You're starting to see prices rise. At TrueCar, we analyze it, and it is absolutely starting to rise 3 4 5% in the marketplace. Great stuff, Scott. Thank you so much. Scott Thanks Painter, for having me. founder and CEO of TrueCar.com. Uh